I'm going to develop an amortization schedule for a bonds purchased at a discount and we'll look at that in terms of a bonds payable here. So what are we talking about? Uh, for example here we have a bond uh, which has a face value of $100,000 now that's its redeemable value out here in the future and it has uh, semi-annual uh, interest payments on that bond here. And what we what we're looking at here is when it's discounted back to its present value here, uh, the, both the uh, annual pay, semi-annual payments and its face value or its principal amount, it has a uh, discounted amount here of $96,150. So what we do is we compare that to its face value here or we subtract that from its face value and it has a discount amount here of $3,850. So this amount has to be amortized over the life of that bond and that's where we're going to determine our uh, amortization schedule based on this discount amount on the bond and how it's included both in, uh, in the interest expense here and also how we record our interest payable here for each of those semi-annual payments and how that as well is included here in our interest expense. All right, here's an amortization schedule for a bond purchased at a discount. And I have it in table form here where the columns are referenced above and then a simple explanation for the calculation on each column. So let's go and see how we made our entries here and how our, we calculated our interest expenses and our amortization on this bond. First here we uh, put in our face value of the bond that was $100,000 and then our purchase uh, price here was ninety six thousand one hundred and fifty so our balance in this bond discount account here would be the difference between the two which is thirty eight hundred and fifty one dollars and then just for a reference here I have the payments so um, payments listed here with their corresponding entry so let's just consider these payments into the period entry entries here so the issue date was on line one payments are listed here in each of the in this case there are ten payments it was a five-year bond so and there were semi-annual payments here so let's go and look here first at the regular interest payment that we have to make on that bond and the bond was it was issued at a stated rate of nine percent interest so our semi-annual rate is four and a half percent so we determine this interest payment here by taking a uh, in this case it would have been the nine percent on the face value here times a hundred thousand dollars or nine thousand dollars per year and divide by that by two by forty five hundred dollars or just taking a four and a half percent times a hundred thousand dollars here to determine this interest payment. Now this is what we pay regularly on that uh, bond that goes through our cash account here. Now we have to recognize interest expense on our income statement for that bond. So we do that by taking, in this case it's the market rate. Our interest has changed here to a 10% from the 9% uh, face value of the bond to 10%. So what we do here, we take um, the 5% times in this case we divide 10 percent by 2 to get a 5 percent semi-annual interest rate and we take this uh, determine this expense here by taking at times the book value or our carrying value of the bond here in this case for the first period was 96,150 take that times 5 percent and we get an interest expense here of forty four thousand eight hundred and seven dollars now we've got this bond amortization to account for and this is actually a balancing account here between our interest expense and our interest payable that we made so you subtract the interest uh, uh, the interest expense here from the interest uh, payment amount and we get three hundred and seven dollars here so that would be the difference here then our balance here in the bond discount amount that we would take this three hundred and seven dollars in this case minus the uh, our initial balance here at the issue date here of thirty thirty eight hundred and fifty one dollars and we, our new uh, balance in this discount account would be thirty five hundred and forty four dollars now at the same time we are taking our book value here and also increasing it by amount the amount of this discount amount here so as this discount increases uh, our amortization on the bond increases so does our book value increase here 
Now we would repeat each of these um, calculations in the same fashion here. So starting out in period two, we still have our $4,500 payment that we would, uh, our regular payment, our interest payment that we have to make. And then our interest expense here would uh, be based on our uh, carrying value here, our previous carrying value. In this case, it was $96,000 uh, and $96,456. So you take that times 5% and you get $4,823. So again, we subtract out here our um, regular payment on interest minus this interest expense that we recognize the and the income statement when we get the amortization here at the bond. So we reduce the bond by that difference here. And then our balance in the bond discount account here would decrease again by that amount that we recognize or this amortization amount and in our bond value actually increases here as uh, the amortization increases so does our book value on the bond increase so when we get down to the last uh, period here at the end of the period when we have to pay it off we've got a balance in our bonds payable of a hundred thousand dollars and the book value of the bond is a hundred thousand dollars and then we just look at our totals our interest payments were forty five thousand dollars and the interest expense that we recognize the income statement was forty eight thousand eight hundred sixty six dollars and then this the difference here was this bond amortization. So the balance in the bond amortization or bond um, am, uh, bond discount account here was zero at the end of the or close to zero in this case at the end of the uh, last period. So everything balances out.